God's doing a new work in this house. Hallelujah. Have to be aware Bless your name, Lord. of his closeness. Yes, your name, Jesus. Yes, yes. You have to be aware of his coming to you. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. He, he's not out to challenge you right now unless it's because you're shutting him off. He wants to uh, touch you in deeper ways than he ever has before. And he talk, he's talking to me about his tender mercies. The Lord is good to all. Psalm 145 verse 9. And his tender mercies are over all his works. So nobody's going to miss this Hallelujah. unless they want to. Hallelujah. Because God is making himself available. Amen. And there's, there's, there's so much of this that the Holy Spirit just wants to bring to you on purpose for you. Thank you, Lord. Because Amen. he knows the things that are missing. He knows Amen. the things that, that you have never received. He knows what has never been done for you. And he's changing his people. Proverbs 12, 10, it says, A righteous man regardeth the life of his beast, but the tender mercies of the wicked is cruel. Some have been brought up with so much rejection that uh, there's times when the Lord has tried to approach them and they've pushed him away. And you may not think that's possible, but, but it is. Because they've hurt so bad. Yeah. And the rejection from the beginning, he's going to take it away. Mm -hmm. And he's going to do it by tender mercy. Amen. And he keeps telling me, it's not going to be by you laying on of hands. It's going to be by the Holy Spirit coming to you. One on one. So he's setting you up for that. I want you to hear me. He's setting you up for that. I got a couple of scriptures that he made come alive to me just a few minutes ago. Uh, John chapter 14, verse 21. He that has my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me. And he that loveth me shall be loved of my Father. And I will love him and will manifest myself to him. And when there's a manifestation of the Lord, it's coming through the power of the Holy Spirit. But I will manifest myself to him. I know uh, we want a lot of ministry to other people through us. But right now you need to be just concentrating on letting the Holy Spirit minister to you. The time will come when he will turn around and use what he's doing to you yes. for other people. Yes. But right now, and the other thing he told me, he says, uh, what if I'm the one that's keeping other people away from you and I want to manifest myself to who's here? Wow. Wow. So let him be in charge of the numbers. The other scripture he gave me was uh, in 1 Corinthians 12. And he, he's, he's 
saying, I want you to see this manifestation, but I want you to see it for yourself. Yeah. Not going out of you to somebody else, <laughs> but I want you to receive it for what I want to do to you. Yeah. Uh, 1 Corinthians uh, 12, 7. But the manifestation of the Spirit is given to every man to profit with all. <clears throat> See, in John 14, 21, he just said, I'm going to love those who love me, and I'm going to manifest myself to them. So, which ones of the manifestations is he going to use on you? I don't know. But he's doing it here. He's doing it in, in special groups. And he's He's doing it wherever he wants to do it. Amen. Verse 8, for uh, to one is given by the Spirit the word of wisdom, to another the word of knowledge, but it's the same Spirit. To another the special faith, by the same Spirit. To another the gifts of healing, by the same Spirit. So, could this be a time where the Holy Spirit wants to come and the gifts of healing is turned inside of you to heal you and stop the battle that's going on between the spirit and the flesh. Stop, stop the war that continues inside of you and all of a sudden you just come out with peace. And and the way he has given this to me, it's like you're going to have a prophecy or a word of wisdom or a word of knowledge, but it's not going to be for somebody else. It's going to be for you. <laughs> and you're going to have to know the voice of the Lord. And you know the way, the way the Holy Spirit is with me is when he starts speaking something, he don't give up. That's right. Until he fulfills it. Mm -hmm. Because he's heard the Father and the Son say, Thank this you. is what I want to do to Nicene, and this is what I want to do to Douglas. Thank you. Yes, yes, yes. Thank you, Lord. So there's a holiness. I, I can't say it's coming because it's here. And, and it's going to be a holy thing. Yes. And how he does it, when he does it, I don't know. Yes, I know I'm a part of it. Yes, God. Yes, yes. But I don't know how he's going to do it in your situation. Mm -hmm. <coughs> I know I'm not the one that's going to lay hands on you. Mm -hmm. he, he's telling me I want to do it myself. Yes, yes, yes. <coughs> so... In, in uh, Luke 175, it's talking about John the Baptist. And it says, In holiness and righteousness before the Lord all the days of his life. And thou, child, shalt be called a prophet of the highest, for thou shalt go before the face of the Lord to prepare his ways. I think this is a time when the anointing is going to work for you and you're going to have to be before the face of the Lord. This, this is not always an anointing that's going to be shared until the proper time. Okay? Because so this is John's anointing but John was not favored with a lot of fame. John was favored with a lot of people to get them baptized and get them ready for Jesus. Yes. Yes. So that's not necessarily going to be a multitude of people. Mm. Because a lot of people don't want that. Right. They want just the opposite. Mm -hmm. You know, I got I to gotta go, I got to go, I got to go. Mm. Well, if, if God is shutting you down, where are you going to go? God is telling you to seek him and you're doing something else 
it's not going to be much profit in it. So uh, I'm asking you to pray. I'm asking you to, you know, watch out for this cruel spirit. I, I'm not saying you have a cruel spirit. I think the cruelty of the enemy is against us because God wants to touch us so greatly and change us from the, from the inside out. You know, the, the, the foundation of God has got to be secure. The foundation of God has got to be whole. Yes. And he wants you so whole that when he does send you out, your words, your anointing, your whatever is, is just like Jesus. No difference. Uh, I'm sorry, Luke 177. That anointing that was on John is, had great favor with God, not with man. It didn't turn any Pharisees. They want to know who he was and what he was doing. But it doesn't say any of them got baptized. Jesus couldn't turn them either. The 77 says to give knowledge of salvation unto the people by the remission of their sins through the tender mercy of God. See, as, as rough as John was and, and as probably as bad as he looked, you know, a bearded man with a camel coat and eating locusts, I don't know if I'd even go around him. <laughs> Never mind, listen to him. Whereby the day spring from on high has visited us. And you know the day spring is the bright morning star. And so he's preparing the way for this other to come in the Son of God. To give light to them that sit in darkness and the shadow of death to guide our feet into the way of peace. See, and I, I, I think this is a peace that we have been looking for. I think this is a peace that is going to be such a depth to it that it changes our life completely. Things that we have battled, we won't have to battle anymore. There'll be new, new adventures, new heights to go to. That doesn't stop. But yesterday's battles are totally gone. And the child grew and waxed strong in spirit and was in the desert till the day of his showing unto Israel. So he couldn't just go out and he couldn't just go where he wanted to go. And how many times I've heard the Lord say to me, uh, your ministry is different your ministry is not quite put together yet. And the Holy Spirit would come and tell me, say, just keep trusting me. You know, and I, I asked a good friend of mine in Russia, he was a pastor, I said, when, when you hear that, do you think it's always God? He said, I don't think Satan would ever tell me to trust God. <laughs> So, First John two twenty. You have an unction. You have an anointing. Use that anointing and go after the Lord. Every, everything else that that you're working on. See if the Lord loves you, lay it down. Just go after the Lord. But you have an unction from the Holy One, and you know all things. I have not written unto you because you know not the truth, but because you know it, and that no lie is of the truth. 
who is a liar, but he that denies that Jesus is the Christ. Verse 23, whosoever denies the Son, the same has not the Father. I don't think we have that problem in here. Amen. Now, Satan's work doesn't stop until verse 26. These things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And he's the one that's working against us. He's the one that's trying to stop us. He's the one that brings his symptoms. He's the one that, that, that brings us things that sound good, but they're not coming from God. He wants to seduce us. He wants to pull us away from the Lord any way he can. And I, I wrote down the word on this first page, I wrote down the word rejection. And he had that especially in this cruel spirit. And, uh, you know, I can't make my life fit everybody else's life. You're an individual. And, and you came according to your parents, according to what they wanted or didn't want, according to uh, acceptance or rejection, even from your mother's womb. Uh, that doesn't fit with everybody. But the spirit of rejection is the spirit that works harder against us than anything else in us. Just for us to be rejected. And, and, and then we, we start with things like, God, where are you? I thought you had already dealt with this. But that doesn't seem, mean that Satan has stopped harassing, trying to seduce. I thought you loved me. Yeah, he does. Verse 28 of uh, 1 John 2. And now little children abide in him. Well, you know that goes back to John chapter 15. That when he <laughs> shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. So what if, what if this coming is that close? And he's just trying to level your foundation and just wanting to work with you. And you know, tender mercies is the same thing as having compassion. Mercy and compassion are almost the same word. And God is trying to finish something so, so that he can bust you out and, and put you where he needs you to be. And, just don't know all those things. But, but this statement, he says, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him and his coming. Uh, if this statement is, is not building confidence in you, uh, maybe you, you don't recognize your anointing. Mm -hmm. The one God has already put in you. Jesus said, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. And that same spirit of the Lord is not only upon us, but he's in us. Amen. And I know there's times when he's upon us, but there's times when he's not upon us. Yeah. I understand that. But he's in us. Yes. He's in us. And th these are things I believe that he wants to speak to each and every one of us, especially about the tender love, tender mercy. And if that's been missing from your life or part of your life, then I think in place of it, Satan has tried to seduce you and maybe has done some cruel things, uh, has tried to reject you, and that rejection just doesn't go away because you push it down. It goes away because you deal with it, and it's hard sometimes. Very difficult. But you know, uh, the end of this thing in verse 29 and first, first John 2, if, if you know that he is righteous, you know that everyone that doeth righteousness is born of God. So you know you're the righteousness of God. 
Come on, I could get up and shout for this stuff, but that's not what he's doing right now. That's not right, he's good. If you know he is righteous, you know you're born of him, and you're doing righteousness with him. You're living in that righteousness, and you're doing it with the Lord. Because you know that he and you are righteous, then you have to know that all your sins are forgiven. He that committed sin is of the devil, and the devil sent it from the beginning. So he's still trying to seduce us. He's been in sin from the beginning. He started to sin in heaven, not on the earth. And Satan had to, uh, Jesus had to come. The Son of God was manifest and sent to destroy the works of the devil in heaven and in us. And that's why the enemy is after us. Amen. 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 Because we are free from the sinful yes. life. Yes, thank you, Lord. We are free from sin. Thank you, Lord. You know, I wrote a statement down here. <laughs> and I don't know if you've thought about it before, but forgiveness is in your anointing. Because mm. wow. everything that God gave you is first true, uh -huh. and then it's pure. So forgiveness is in your anointing. And when your anointing goes into other people, just imagine the truth of what you're saying to them. Imagine what you're bringing to them. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin, for his seed remains in him, and he cannot sin because he is born of God. See, so that anointing is pure from the very beginning. I, I just never thought about that before. First Peter 2.24, who his own self bear our sins in his own body on the tree, that we being dead to sin. That's hard to grasp sometimes. I'm, I'm still wanting to check myself. And I'm not saying that's wrong, but if you're dead to sin, then you should be living under righteousness. And it may be that I'm dead to sin, but I don't understand all my righteousness. And that's where Satan is having to feel that. My mind's got to be renewed. Let whose, let whose stripes, by whose stripes you were healed. Now think about verse 25. For ye were a sheep going astray. But I'm, I'm not trying to go astray anymore. I'm doing everything I can to follow. I think you are too. Amen. <laughs> but now return unto the shepherd and the bishop of your soul. So your soul is in a position where you shall not want. Your, your soul is in a position where there's, there's so much anointing that God can prepare a, a table before you in the presence of your enemy, and your enemy can't do anything. Then there's so much anointing, he anoints your head with oil and the cup runs over. I think that's the ministry that the Holy Spirit is bringing to us. Oh. Our cup is going to run over. Oh, I like that. I like that. Cool. Am, am I making any sense? Yes, 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 yes. I receive it. Yes. I receive it. Okay. Amen. He anoints my head with oil. He, he takes Christ <coughs> and he brings so much of him into me that the Messiah is touching me afresh and anew. Mm -hmm. He's anointing me again. He's anointing something in my life that's, that needs to disappear, mm -hmm. that needs to be taken away, that needs to become a finished work. <laughs> and, and then, you know, my mind wants to go and say, okay, when did that happen? You know, and trying to figure it all out. And I don't know that I can. 
I don't know that I even want to. Just let him do what he wants to do. That's right. The word Christ means anointed or anoint. And uh, Christ also means you're the chosen one. He said, I have, I, I have not chosen him, but he has chosen us. That's, that's when he became, uh, he put that anointing in us when we were born again. Uh, the term for, for Christ is not meant to be his last name, but it's, it's Christ the word, uh, more than a title. It's the office of Christ as well as his purpose. It's his office to be over us, mm -hmm. and it's his purpose to make us like himself. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Your anointing works. Uh, it, it means to rub, to sprinkle, to anoint, you know all of that. Uh, it can even be liquid. My question is, do you have an active anointing? Uh, an active anointing is full of life, value, and divine power. I, I want you to go after that. I want you to go after your anointing. I want you to see it in the light that God sees it. And, and maybe make a prayer, you know, anything missing. Anything I'm not seeing that's already in my anointing, bring it, bring it into my foundation. Bring it to me so I can be used. Yes. These these gifts of the Spirit are a manifestation to come to us, but then you know what? They're going to be a manifestation that will go through us to somebody else, and I think it's going to happen through tender mercy, Amen. and it's going to happen into people's lives without hands being laid on them. That you have a word for somebody, and it's a word of wisdom and a word of knowledge. You know, I, I went into a prison one time, and and uh, wherever I wherever I was going to church, they had been praying about uh, uh, not making up a prophecy. You know, just because somebody wanted something didn't mean you had something for them. And, and this guy come up after the church service, and he says, Pastor Phil, he says, uh, would you pray and see if God has anything for me? And I said, now look, I don't know if God has anything for you, and I can't say anything unless I know it's God. Right. So I close my eyes and I, I pray for him. And all of a sudden, it just come to me, and I tell him, I says, uh, God wants you to trust him, and, and some other things. And, and I said, I know God has your life in his hands. It was, it was really just so simple. And I looked at him, and he, he, was, he, he was crying his eyes out. And I thought, my Lord, I guess that was strong for him. But you know, sometimes, it's, it's in you so much. It's in you so strong. And it, it's, it's the Lord bringing it together. And it's the Lord who's bringing the person there. You may have spent the time praying in the Spirit. You may have spent the time with, with the Lord. But it's the Lord that has the answer. You know? yes. oh. And just you're yielding to Him. He can, he can make it happen just like that. And you don't, you don't even know the results that come. You choose for your anointing to be strong, full of Jesus, full of faith in the Lord. You choose it. Uh, if you're afraid of your anointing, you've got some work to do. 
If you've never used your anointing, you've got so much to do. And if you've used it in a different way than what I'm saying today, praise the Lord. That's good. You choose the Holy Spirit. The law of the Spirit of life in Christ Jesus activates itself in you whenever he wants to. And whenever he's bringing about the situation and the circumstances of what people need. The Holy Spirit wants to work with you making deposits of his sign following you. When he sends you, when he gets ready to send you somewhere, what you leave behind, behind the next person will use. So you go in there and, and you process and you do everything God has for you to do, but your anointing stays behind. You choose for the Holy Ghost to come to your meeting and to help you say and do your message. You plan to exalt, edify, and comfort the body of Christ. Okay? Demonstrations of the Spirit and power um, that's living after your anointing. You're looking for that. You're not afraid of those demonstrations. Paul said, I, I, I went there, I didn't know anything. I, I, I didn't plan. But I knew the Lord was going to do something. Okay. Today may be in the words. You, you, you may go into a place and, and have a message for those people. And the whole message be a prophecy. You, you don't know. Sometimes it's just certain people that the Lord puts in front of you and something comes out. Praise God. I wrote a little statement, I will do the will of the Spirit, being anointed by Him to set the captive free. My Lord has taken the keys away from Satan. I am he, Revelation 1.18, I am he that liveth and was dead, and behold, I am alive forevermore. Amen. And I have the keys to heaven, to hell and to death. So those things. Now, one more thought, and uh, I think it's time to close. We are his workmanship, created in Christ Jesus. So if there's, if there's rejection, say from the mother's womb, or if there's rejection in your life someplace else down the line, it was not created in Christ Jesus. See, it's trying to break down your anointing. It's trying to break down the word that you're learning. It's trying to destroy the things that God has put in you that you know are truth. And even when it looks like it doesn't work, listen, this stuff was so strong in me, I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't uh, wish the virus on my worst enemy. Amen. But I tell you, I laid there and I thought, you know, you're trying to take my mind away from me. Because I had to struggle the first first day, I think it was the first day, that I was awakened and lay there to bring my thoughts back from my spirit and put them in my mind. And because I had Exodus 15, 26, I'd had that for a long time. I am the Lord that healeth it. But there were other things that, I, like, like Isaiah 53, 5, I had to I had to almost learn that scripture all over again just to bring it back into my mind. And it's like the Holy Spirit was helping me do that and bringing other scriptures up from my spirit. That my, and I, I text somebody later 
And I said, I got my mind back. And they had had a bout with the, with the virus too. They told me, said, uh, I went through the same thing. So again, I'm, I'm asking you to wear a mask. But you know, just, just be sensible about your life. And, and watch yourself. And if you don't need a mask when you're praising and worshiping, praise the Lord, take it off. But keep your distance away from each other. We're, we're big enough and small enough to do that. If I had it to do over, I'd go get the shot. <laughs> Great faith. We are his workmanship. So far is this salvation from being our own work. See, none of it has been our own work from the beginning. Why should it stop being his work now? Why can't he not come and make something straight that's still crooked in us? Well, I got Jesus in my spirit. I got everything. Uh, in your spirit. But if he wants, he's the Lord, he is your shepherd, you shall not want, and he's wanting to eradicate some other things that are holding your soul in bondage. Right, 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 right. Why not let him? Yes, yes, yes. Okay, I'm going to do it this time, and then, and then we'll, we'll close. <laughs> so, Amen. Psalm 23. And I know you all know Psalm 23. But knowing it and living it is two different things. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still water. There's, there's a surrender there mm -hmm. to the Lord. I shall not want, but there's some things I have to surrender to. Yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. And I don't know how he's going to do those things, but if I truly want my restoration, because that's the next thing that's coming, I want him to deal with my soul. Mm -hmm. I want him to take the rejection and the other crooked things out of there. And, and then he says, he leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Just because his name is the name above every name, he's going to lead me into righteousness. Well, ministry is going to follow that leading. And some of us have, have not done verse 2. Yet we expect verse 3 to come alive. Yea, do I walk through the valley of the shadow of death? I will fear no evil. Are you still fighting fear? I won't fear any evil. Because I'm only walking through what's a shadow. I, I don't like the shadow I walk through. For, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, thy comfort me. So you heard me say this before, I'm going to say it again. If the rod and the staff are comforting you, they cannot be beating you. They cannot be evil against you and comfort you. So his rod and his staff are both for comfort. I, I think that's the Holy Spirit working through the Spirit of Christ. Thou prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Okay, in the presence of my enemies, he's preparing a table before me. When I got my taste buds back, that food in the hospital was just so good. Knock. <laughs> 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 Thank you, Jesus. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I think that's the state we're in right now. He wants the cup to run over. He wants, 
Amen. There's so much in us. Surely a goodness. goodness. And does that mercy. Yes, mercy is always tender. Lord. Mercy always comes through the blood. Mm -hmm. Mercy takes away things in our life that we cannot take away Hallelujah. ourselves. Hallelujah. Mercy has a compassion. Uh, uh, Rodney Lloyd went to Africa and, and the lady came to him and his children, his little boy's feet were out like that. And all he could do is pray in the spirit and cry. Mm -hmm. And mother came back with a little boy the next morning. And his feet were straight. Mm -hmm. All he could do is cry. The mercy of God just yes. came out of him. Yes, mm -hmm. yes, yes, yes. Truly goodness and mercy yes. shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord. For how long? Forever. Okay. And the house of the Lord is not just in church. Boy, is a sanctuary. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word today. We are your workmanship. Make our anointing active. Help us to be full of life, value, and divine power. Let the strength that comes through the fullness of Jesus and the fullness of faith in you be the Lord in us. We choose the Holy Spirit. We choose not to destroy nor be stubborn. We break the power of the name put on us as good for nothing, lazy, we never do anything right. And we choose for you to come alongside the Holy Spirit, expecting your work in us and making a deposit of yourself in us with signs following. We choose for the Holy Ghost to come to us and help us to say and do whatever you have for us to do. You plan and edify, exalt, and comfort us in the body of Christ. And I can tell you, some of you right now, that the war in your mind You're, you're in the valley of, of uh, decisions. Mm -hmm. He didn't say indecision. Mm -hmm. You're in the valley of decisions. Mm -hmm. And the Lord is waiting on you to make decisions. I'm ready Hallelujah. to be free from these things yes. and for your tender mercy to come and get them yes. and take them from you. Let the demonstration of your spirit and power take place in our life as you have said today, Holy Spirit. And thank you for your will being done in us, spirit, soul, and body. In Jesus Christ's name. Amen.